When we talk about launching a counter ambush on the channel, you gotta know when you can and when you can't. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. Today, we have eight videos, eight different opportunities for us to look, all from Sao Paulo do Norte, Houston, Texas. To win the fight after the fight, you need help. After a use of force, I trust Firearms Legal Protection to help me win the fight for the rest of my life. From their 24-7 attorney answered hotline to coverage for the use of all legal tools, Firearms Legal Protection has you covered. Get a discount by signing up at the link below. Armed robbery number one, you're gonna see these two guys come in with their hoods up and their masks on and they are very quickly then going to show a gun to the clerk by jumping across the counter. He's gonna grab a hold of the clerk and then stick him on the register and, and he's got, you can see that leveraging arm on him and a gun kind of stuck to the guy's back where he is then talking about him. His partner is then gonna go and start opening cash drawers and putting cash in to their backpack or bag or whatever it is that they've got there. And then they're gonna hold this guy and I've sped this up just simply for the sake of time. But they're gonna kind of hold him back here and you can see that the gunman has a hold of him and has his gun kind of held low, but then he'll also point it at him again, and he's gonna kind of hold it to him and point it at him some more, while his partner is gonna take everything out of the drawers. I don't know if they stole other stuff or product or anything like that. Then they are gonna finally kind of decide, oh, okay, they've got everything that they are gonna need to. The clerk is what looks to me to be very calm through all this. Then once they have what they want, they are going to, the two of them, run off. The clerk was not hurt. This one, again, at a cell phone store here, you're gonna watch this dude walk in super nonchalantly. And he is just gonna kind of walk up to the counter, pull a gun when he does so, tell him that he wants into the cash drawer, and the clerk is gonna be like, hey man, just turn that key, and it's there right there for you. So he's gonna go and get the money out of the cash drawer and then say, oh, I want it out of the other ones too. He goes, hey, we don't have any cash in that drawer. So he's gonna put the gun in his left hand, open that drawer, see it's just supplies, open this one, see it's just supplies, see if there's any bigger bills underneath. Nope, there sure isn't. So he's gonna decide that's enough and casually walk out, thankfully without hurting anybody. Now, our third one here, gonna see this guy walk in and feign being a customer at first uh, and ask some questions. In the original, he's asking some questions in Spanish. My Spanish isn't good enough to understand it, but we actually do have some audio on this one of the actual robbery going on. So once he pulls the gun, let's listen in on the audio. Okay. He leaves. We actually have audio on the next one too. Let's listen in. Next one coming up, as these guys run off, we have audio on too. Let's listen in.
So this one looks like a big convenience store here. You're gonna see these guys pile out of the SUV, two armed men here, and once they get inside the door, one of them is gonna go over to what looks like a gambling counter, like you know some video poker machines or slot machines, something like that. The other one's gonna go back behind the counter, and they're gonna kind of play a little Keystone Cops here at first going back there. But now the guy that goes behind the counter, you can see that there's like bulletproof glass here, but it's not helping him because the bad guy got through the door. And, and so the clerk just backs away. You can see he's got his hands in the air. This guy's gonna take the money out of the till and then I think go get a shopping bag to put his money in. He didn't think enough ahead to bring himself a bag or maybe he did and thought that he was going to use a paper or a plastic bag from, uh, from the convenience store. So he's gonna point the gun at him a little bit here, take all of the money out. The other guy is over with all of the customers and he has got their wallets. You see him, he gets this guy on the ground who's to the right. Uh, the other guy that's to the bottom of the screen, he's gonna grab all of his stuff as well. And once they've victimized everybody in this convenience store, you can see the poker machines over by the motor oil, they are then going to run off back to their car as well. Are you getting frustrated yet at all these successful armed robberies? I know I sure am. We got more to go though. You're gonna see these next one. These two dudes are gonna walk in both with their hoods up. Um, not the sharpest tools in the shed here because uh, yeah, they've got their hoods up and all that stuff, but they don't have masks on. And so we're gonna be able to see them. You see the one come behind the counter and he's got a gun in his hand. Clerk is gonna be very chill with him here. And once he comes around with the gun in his hand, he's gonna say, oh, okay, you go over to this other side. And the guy kind of does that. The second guy is on the other side of the counter right now. So our, our perp here with the gun in his hand, is gonna take all the bills. And then, uh, you know, he's talking to his partner a little bit. He's gonna pick that up and, and hand it over where I think maybe his partner can grab the coins or whatever. And I don't know if he's trying to get him to open something or whatever, or the clerk's just like, okay, you want $50 on number seven or something or whatever. But you can see our second guy on the other side doesn't have a gun in his hand. He is grabbing a bunch of product on the way out and he is being, you know, Captain Smiley Face on his way out because they have succeeded. Our dude with the gun grabs some stuff on the way out too. He's pretty happy about what he has done and they're gonna run off. This last one here that we have, Dude walks in at first talking like a customer. He's gonna walk back out and then open the door for his homies and say, yeah, it's, it's on, let's go ahead and do this. So then that way when he comes in a second time, he is then going to pull a gun out of his pocket and threaten the clerk behind the counter with it. Now there's gonna, he's gonna tell him to come over and open up the uh, register for him and point a gun at him. Now the guy shows up in, in either an orange or a red shirt. He is gonna pull a gun with a big old stendo on it and he is gonna go over the counter and stand on the counter and grab that clerk and move him out of the way. You got at least one other employee back there you barely saw on camera. And then they are going to hold the, the clerk that was behind the counter at gunpoint, the guy in the red hoodie is. And then the other guy in the hoodie is then going to clean out the register. And then these guys, again, thankfully in this case are not gonna hurt anyone, though of course the emotional toll is not insignificant too. You saw the guy with the red uh, you know, sweater on, he's grabbing some product behind the counter and now he's opening the stuff up. They're gonna grab the, the entire register tray out, put some stuff in their pockets and whatever. And, and listen, uh, we've seen a bunch of robberies here. Let's talk about where our ambush opportunities are. I really think that recognizing when your go signal happens, when it's your turn in a counter ambush, is very critically important. That's the value of these videos as we get into the lessons. You know, the reality is some of these have good ambush opportunities and some of them don't. Of course, somebody walking into your store with a mask on and a hood on is absolutely a prelude to an armed robbery in 2023 and beyond. Make sure that you are paying attention to that. But number two, in this particular case, I don't know that this guy has a lot of chances to do anything because he's got a gunman and a grab man and that gunman has a hold of him by kind of the neck and the arm and he's using the gun as kind of, you know, a lever there to keep him at bay. Let him know that he's got a gun, but that the guy can't really turn into him. So, you know, would I recommend a disarm attempt here? Well, listen, I know plenty of martial arts systems that say, oh, we've got a Kung Fu disarm for this. Just recognize that in the real world, you better be able to do that quickly. You better have 100% and the presence of a second bad guy. Now, a lot of times we see the second bad guy just run off but not always, and in an enclosed space like this, it really makes it very, very difficult. So especially, you know, when he puts the gun up next to him there, he might, if he has some real skills, be able to take it away from him. Probably a really dangerous idea here may not be a great opportunity. This one is a very different story. So you see this guy's super casual, and yeah, he's gonna pull a gun, but we talk about that two second, 1.5 second, one second draw and first shot. 
This guy here instantly goes, oh, okay, do the thing and shows him his ear. So he's paying attention to the register down. The gun's not up on any of the clerks. And if you got a 1.5 second draw to first shot, remember that guy shows you his ear like this is here. You've got him. There's nothing he's going to do to outdraw you in that place if you're carrying your firearm, if you're ready, and if you know what your go signal is. Now, he's going to even turn here and he shows him his back. So you see here that a two second draw to first shot, if he shows you his back like this, or he shows you the back of his head, if you've got a two second draw to first shot, there's nothing he's going to do to outdraw you in that particular case. So, so again, can you shoot somebody in the back? Yes, it's not about where you shoot someone, it's about why you shoot them. And I shot him because he was threatening me with a gun in order to steal money from the store. He was threatening to kill me with that gun. I felt like I had to shoot him or he was going to kill me. Absolutely reasonable articulation of the reason to use deadly force. Now this guy, he does give us a 1.52 if you were paying attention, but you better pay attention to it. Now, might be a 1.0 in here a little bit earlier. Not a whole lot of people have that in a real world application, but let's watch as he starts the armed robbery here. You're gonna see him kind of real quick glance over. And when he gets that glance over, he barely shows the, the ear. You can see it right from where we're at. I don't know that the clerk would have had that. I think the clerk here would have probably had more like a 1.0 if he wanted to go, although the guy doesn't even have a gun in his hand. So because he has, doesn't have a gun in his hand, I think a 1.5 second draw to first shot would have been effective here if you take the go signal and freaking go. Now, the fact that the guy puts the gun away doesn't mean he's less of a deadly threat. He, he is still threatened you with that gun and is currently threatening you with that gun. So it's absolutely reasonable to shoot that guy. And here you'd be in a, a complete basic draw, you know, uh, timed event. You would be in a quick draw contest and so this is why we say, man, take a professional class, come over to the Aspen Unlimited app and uh, take evidence-based pistol with Neil and I. It's free for all you know, app subscribers. Of course, the app isn't free, guys. You know, It's a subscription-based, but come over and start a free trial. Take that class, make your draw faster, and then you know, man, there's almost no chance this guy's gonna be faster than me and I can get him and end this threat and mean that he cannot threaten my life anymore for the store's money. It's not about the money at all. It's about your life that is being threatened when you're in this particular place. And this is Houston for gracious sakes. Why are more good people not carrying firearms, especially in Houston, but anywhere in Texas for goodness sakes. This guy runs off, okay, fine. And I'm not even talking about crime prevention here. I'm talking about you know uh, protecting your own life. Now in this case here, dude comes up, we got a gunman and a grab man, but not really a grab man. We got a gunman and a doorman. This is kind of, we're seeing this every once and again. It's kind of an oddity. Now, the one thing that I would say here is, listen, she has a am counter ambush here if she's carrying and ready. We see more and more women carrying with enigmas so that they can carry anywhere they want. The Pilster Enigma is a really cool system. And, and listen, you know, get that gun out and go to work if you are so armed. Now, she's just going to stand there instead, and eventually the guy's going to start yelling at her that he wants her to go in the back. Now, I got to tell you, I am not a fan of being taken to a second location, and the back of the store is where bad things happen. It's where people get killed, where no one else can see. It's where people get tied up, they get assaulted, those kinds of things. So I'm not a fan of that. You got to decide for yourself what are your go? I'm going to fight no matter what times. Uh, for me, it's being put on the ground, being tied up, being taken to a second location. I'm going to go no matter what, even from the drop. You got to decide for you, okay? I'm not telling you to adopt my attitude in that. I'm telling you to really think for yourself what is the best thing there because it depends on your own capabilities and your own risk tolerances. Now, this one here, I, I don't really see any great opportunities. Dude comes in, gun up, eyes on you, and says, you know, freeze, don't move. I, man, you're really drawn from the drop there, unless you're an employee in another spot. If you are a second employee, I don't see any more employees here in this store, but if you had a second employee in another spot, maybe they had an opportunity, but you got like five dudes here that are all jumping the place. That is not a great time to get into that kind of a gun battle. Although I will say, having a higher capacity firearm, a very good thing here if you're gonna go to work, now, you're probably not going to have to shoot all five of them, <clears throat> but having some more capacity wouldn't be wrong. Notice here, our gunman's got a bunch of crap in his arms. Still absolutely a deadly threat. If you get your gun out there, you might have a, a counter ambushing opportunity there when you see that he's got a bunch of crap in his hands like he does right here. And, and listen, he's not pointing the gun at you. He doesn't have his eyes on you. Great opportunity for a counter ambush there if you're paying attention, if you're in a place you can see, and if you are ready to go. Now, this one, actually, I think that there are some opportunities when you get to look at it. So again, we're seeing back and forth. Where are they? Now, the clerk behind the counter here, as these guys come in, is in a different spot than the people who are at the poker machines, right? Because the clerk behind the counter, for golly sakes, should, first of all, have the door closed. And all the bulletproof glass in the world is not gonna help you one iota if the door is open. That is stupid to defeat your mechanism. But 
look for this right here. He's got a 1-5. Guy puts the gun on him a little bit, but now he's got a two-second here if he wants it. So he's got plenty of opportunities here in when the guy's paying attention away from him. You know, even from a hands-up draw from a very, you know, uh, you know, USPSA style way hands-up surrender posture draw. If you've got a 1.5 or a 2.0, you can burn this guy down. And, and I think you'd be 100% justified to do so because, again, he's threatening you with a gun. These customers, you see the customer that's back behind him? Absolutely right here. Now he's going to turn over to him and look at him a little bit and then turn and look away from him. So, again, if you're paying attention here and you are armed and you are willing and you are ready and you know what your draw time is, the big things here is you have to know. And the only way you're going to do that is if you have a timer on the range and know what your capabilities are and train them. It doesn't take a ton of training, but it does take some. We do some of that over on Active Self Protection Extra on the second YouTube channel, some here uh, you know, on the main channel in terms of what problems you need to solve and a bunch in the ASP Unlimited app, a whole bunch there that's uh, only in the ASP Unlimited app, including a bunch of classes by other instructors too. Now, this guy, again, plenty of opportunities. You see here, he's gonna open the cash register and when he does, the guy just fixates right to the cash register. Dude, take a step backwards. He's like, go away from me, good. Gave, you, gave him your back, okay, fine. Now, I wouldn't go try to choke him or whatever. That gun's gonna come around and cause you problems, but draw your gun and shoot that guy and shoot him a whole bunch right in his back, absolutely. Again, it's not about where you shoot someone, it's about why you shoot them. If they are an objective, reasonable, deadly threat, then, and he's threatening you with a gun 100%. I do like that this clerk was chill, that he, he didn't get his, you know, his hackles all up, that he just sat, paid attention, did what they said. And in every one of these cases, compliance works. So it's, it is a strategy, and I don't want you to think that compliance isn't a strategy that you should consider. It worked in these cases. What we find is that about 25% of people who are fully compliant in armed robberies end up being injured. And, and if instead, though, that if you draw a gun and get a shot off at an armed robber, you're only injured about 6% of the time. So it's about four times more often that fully compliant people get injured than people who offer armed resistance. That said, there are some times that aren't offering armed resistance is a bad idea. And I think here with a guy with his eyes on you who is absolutely paying attention to you is, is a tough idea. We call that drawing from the drop. When you get a second guy who's in there like this, who then again pulls a gun with a big old stendo, you can, man, that's very difficult, very difficult indeed, especially because he's got a hold of you, he's got the high ground, you're gonna be like, you know, uh, Obi-Wan and Anakin here and end up getting your legs cut off and end up in a suit for the rest of your life. That's bad, just, you know, dated pop culture reference, but you get my point. Sometimes compliance is the right answer. I do want you to notice here that our homie in the sweatpants and the sweater, eventually you're going to see the fact that he actually has his, uh, you know, the the hem or, or like the, the um, ties of his sweatpants stuck in his hand and stuck to the gun because he, I think he pulled the gun out of there like that. He's actually lucky he didn't end up having some kind of a negligent discharge or something with that gun. Uh, it wouldn't, you know, as long as it wasn't pointed at one of the victims, it wouldn't have bothered me at all. But uh, yeah, there's that. So friends, know when to counter ambush, know when not to, to cover your ASP.